up, everybody? This is Robert Ferguson. Yes, Roberto Lorenzo Ferguson. You can call me the Ferg if you want. I grew up as the Ferg. And if you notice, before the word Ferg, I said the Ferg or the Ferg. Because even as a young person, I used to think there's only one of me. So it's not like Ferg, it was the Ferg. And in my very first vehicle, my license plate said the Ferg. Now that doesn't mean I'm a narcissist. That doesn't mean that I was all caught up in myself. Well, kinda I was at that time. <laughs> but anyway, I am going to be joined by the one and only Hammer Grill. Lisa Marie, and we're going to talk about this thing called life. So I'm not going to waste much time. Uh, you can contact both of us. So if you look down, you can reach out to Lisa, go to her website. You can reach out to me, go to my website. Uh, we have this new program uh, that's called the Gut Reset, which we'll talk a little bit about. And then we're just going to talk about life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a short little video for you as an introduction. Because someone who I used to just love his music, I still love his music, said it so clear. Because at the end of the day, whatever the situation is, when it's going well and when it's not going well, it's this thing called life. Without further delay, watch this short clip and then I'll bring in the one and only Hammer Girl. Beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. Oh no, let's go! You don't lie. The world we're living in. Take a look around. At least you got friends. See, come on, lady. No friendly world. Picked up the phone, dropped it on the floor. It was all I heard. Well, there you go. <laughs> this thing called life, Lisa Marie. What do you think of that? Oh, we got you on mute, Lisa Marie. We got you on mute. Oh, sorry. Oh, That's there you go. <laughs> I was like, let's go crazy. Let's go crazy. Like, think about like the words. This thing called life. Yeah. Man. And, and I, I love how receptive you were when I sent you the message earlier. And I said, hey, you said, well, what are we going to talk about today? I go, well, let's talk about life. And you're like, sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. I mean, man, I mean, who's not dealing with it? I mean, whether it's going to buy some groceries and you find out that the eggs are 30 percent more expensive. Or you decide you're going to go get some gas, at least in California where I'm at, it's never under $5 a gallon. I know. I mean, like, what are I you guys paying? Um, What was it? I don't know. It keeps changing. It, it, it's, under $5, it's under $5 a gallon here. Um, it's been a week. I think it was like $3.50 something. Hmm. So, so for those of you who are catching us live, Darlene... Uh, Diane, you know, Mama Rico, Mama uh, Justine, what are you guys paying? What is gas in your area? I would love to know. And and also when you when you type in what you're paying for gas, let us know what city and state you're in. Because according to Joe Biden, we don't have a problem with you know the economy's rocking. You know, I was just listening to a <laughs> podcast earlier that was saying that from, compared to you know, just a few years ago, you have to be making at least at least an extra eleven thousand dollars a year to, you know, be where you were at. Wow. A few years ago. Hmm. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of money. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm not, I got to take out my calculator, but what is that a month? Jeez. So Sandy is in Post Falls, Idaho. She's paying $3.69 a gallon. Wow. Yeah, that's about what I'm paying. Okay. Like that. And we're paying over $5. That's crazy. A gallon. Yeah. And everybody's wondering why people are, I mean, I've been seeing a lot of people leaving New York as well as I've been seeing people leaving California like crazy. Yeah. And the, the gas prices are different here. Like when I go to like drop my son off at his dad's house, it's actually a lot cheaper. It's like 329 around 329, 330. So I try and like, oh, mom is paying four dollars. And that's I don't premium. know what it is today. Jeez. Crazy. I mean, so people, I like, mean so eleven thousand dollars extra a year is an extra nine hundred and sixteen dollars a month. Wow. Mm. I mean, that's a lot. It is. Right? Man. Like, have you ever seen this movie or heard of a movie called Soya or Soy Vent, Soylent? Jeez, I'm Soylent forgetting. Soylent Green. Any... Yeah, Soylent Green. Did we talk about that? I don't think we have. So are you aware of that movie? Uh, I've never seen it. Okay. If you go on YouTube, you guys, and you look up Soylent Green, when I was a little kid, I mean, tiny kid, I mean, I kind of remember it. So I went back a few weeks ago, and I found it on YouTube, and I watched it. I mean, you know, it's old, but Charleston Heston is like the main star of the movie. And it's, and it's all based on a prediction, right? So the film comes out in 1973. And it's based on what life is going to be like right now. Mm. And New York is where the focus is in the movie. And it's overpopulated. Uh, you have the rich and the poor. So people in this movie, they're buying jam, like a little jar of jam for like $300 in 1973. And the poor people, which is almost everybody, there's no food, really. We're, we're overpopulated. Sound familiar? <laughs> right? <laughs> We're overpopulated and they're getting this food. And you later find out, not to be a spoiler, that the food is made from people who die. Mm. So we're eating people. We have no money. There's no jobs. Everything is just absolutely chaos. Um, and it's a prediction of what's supposed to come. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> Jesus. It's like you don't. Uh, I mean, there's where's mama? I see Chef JJ, Chef JJ, she knows all about the food and what's in there. Um, those are the, some conversations that that take place over on Telegram. Um, you know, a lot of that, a lot of that type of stuff, what they're really doing, what's what's in the food that we're eating. Ooh, well, I mean, you saw uh, the governor of Florida, uh, DeSantis. Uh, wrote a bill last week where he blocked lab-grown meat from being sold in Florida. Did you see that? I didn't see that, no. Yeah. So he's the first governor to say, no, nah, we're not eating that. So the lab-grown meat is moving forward, and the goal is that these companies, which Bill Gates is one of the main owners, they want to be able to put regular, ch I mean, put chicken, lab-grown chicken, lab-grown steak, next to all the other steaks and not tell you that it's lab grown. So well, that's that's, you see like that a lot too. Like people are already talking about that with like a lot of the meats, you know, like you, there was just recently something, I don't know if somebody in the comment section knows, but there was something about um, the meats specifically with Walmart. And then didn't we, when we were on Telegram, like a few weeks ago, um, somebody mentioned that, some um who was it mentioned that it wasn't usda approved there was some meat and i'm like yeah you want to stay away from that meat you know oh yeah I, I remember saying that yet. yes um but like you even see it with like um i saw some videos of big like, people getting ice cream from walmart you know like the you know strawberry shortcake pot you know like or the ice cream cones that you can get the freezer ones mm -hmm. and they put them on their counter and like they don't melt. 
Like yeah, it's not pretty, real yeah. ice cream. Hey, what is it? I don't know. <laughs> it's a whole bunch of chemicals. Ah, who knows? Who knows? I mean, it, it can sit there on, you could put it on your counter or on your kitchen table. And every day for a few days, it will look the same, smell the same. And like you said, it doesn't melt. No. Like what the hell is going on? I don't know, but I think we're about to find out soon. Well, we either it's about to get worse, or you're right, we're about to find out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. So, so Justine Craven says there was a mockumentary on UK television about lab-grown human meat people selling pieces of their flesh <laughs> so they could grow steaks. Oh my goodness. It's happening, and the people who aren't informed really have no idea that this is happening. Like when I talked to my mom, I mentioned lab grown meat. She goes, What's that? She's never heard of it, she has no idea about it. Mm-hmm. And what happens is she'll go to the store and she'll buy lab grown meat, let's say it's chicken, go home and cook it, and go, Something's not right, it's not cooking the way I'm used to it cooking. Yeah, and just think maybe that that meat is bad, and then. The next day, she'll continue moving forward, and maybe she'll get that meat again. And after a while, you get indoctrinated. Next thing you know, you forget what the chicken used to look like when you cooked it. And you just assume that you got to cook it differently. You see how that can happen? Yeah. Now, that's scary. It is? Yes. Very scary. Now... I want to, I mentioned to you also, like I have this article that I'm going to make available tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And it's an article that is taking me about, and it's not long. I think you read it, right? Or you kind of looked at it. I did. Um, And I titled it, and the title could change based on this conversation. The root cause of many health issues has been revealed. And I'm just going to read what I posted originally, and I just kind of kept that as the thesis. It says, let's say you have not been able to figure out why you're tired most of the time. Or that you can't seem to lose weight, even though you are eating right. Would you want to know what the root root cause is? So I want to break that down and I want to go to you and get your thoughts. So the first part of the the question was, or is, let's say you have not been able to figure out why you're tired most of the time. Have you heard people saying they're tired most of the time? I hear that a lot. Okay. So for those who are listening to us and catching us live, is is that you? Are we talking about you? Do you feel like you're more tired now than normal? That, w- that would be interesting to get people's feedback on that. Mm-hmm. And so we'll wait on you guys to respond to that. And then it goes on to say what or that you can't seem to be losing weight, though you're eating right. How often do you hear that, Lisa? Oh, I hear that a lot. I'm doing (laughs) everything. (laughs) Right. So so when when you're meeting someone and they're possibly going to become your client and they and and I know you hear this, they'll say, I don't understand, Lisa. I'm eating healthy. I just the weight's not coming off. What do I, what do yeah, what I, what do you say? Um, like what comes to mind when you hear people? Cause I know I hear that a lot as well. Um, well, different things come to mind. Like first it's like, well, what, you know, let's take a look at what you're, what you're eating. So, you know, we kind of just start there, um, with their food, with their portion, with how they're eating and how they're combining it. But then like other things that come to mind for me, um are things like um so gut um uh molds i think that molds in the homes in our environment is is a big part which all affects the gut and the microbiome as well and i hope you guys are hearing what lisa's saying i hope you're hearing that because that had that wasn't nutrition but that definitely affects your ability to lose weight and your overall health Mm -hmm. Um, and then I just think it's, it, you know, it's, it's our, 
what we're missing in our foods, you know, there's different supplement or vitamins, nutrients, minerals. I think that all plays a part in it. Um, medications. I mean, I could just go down a list of all different things. Um, what about, what do you say about that? Well, I mean, I'm with you. It's like, that's the benefit of someone getting a free consultation with you, right? And you can kind of hear what they have going on. And sometimes even in a free consultation, we could give a couple of tips and a person would go, huh? And then they could apply that mm -hmm. and then they could check in in a month. And sometimes they actually start getting results. It was one thing that they were missing. Yeah. And you advise them in five minutes, they apply it, they get results. Now, I know that most of the results aren't lasting. That's the reason why they would benefit to become your client so they can be checking in with you on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times people are just doing things that they think is helping them, but is not helping them. Yeah. And I love what you said that sometimes they're just not getting something that could be helping them. And because mm -hmm. they're not getting it, then that could be the reason. And that's why I wrote this whole, this article. Yeah. Well, I think it all plays in. It's like, did you watch that documentary? I know we were talking about it, that Netflix documentary on the uh, microbiome. Mm. Yeah. We haven't talked about that. So I watched it. I watched the whole thing. That was a good, that, I think that was, I think they did a really good job on that one. It was good. It was very general. It was general. Uh, yeah. The main, the main authors, are amazing. The two doctors from Stanford, the husband and wife, uh, I have their original book. Uh, I follow them. They are awesome as far as their studies. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that, yeah. So I thought it was great for someone who doesn't know anything about the gut to be introduced to gut health. I agree. And it's okay. it, like, it wasn't like one of those documentaries where it was like completely, you know, biased. Um, I thought it was, I thought there was really good information in there for people who don't understand the, the, the gut, and that I agree. Was a, you know, like even with, um, those certain bacteria, right. That come into play when people aren't losing weight. Like it was so interesting. I love now, talking about the gut though. So what's the name of it? So that those who haven't watched it, cause it's on Netflix, everyone. So, um, Hold on, let me look it up. So, so Lisa's going to look it up so we can, we can lead you in the right direction. If you haven't watched it, my recommendation is don't watch it when you're tired. Because, you know, Lisa will be excited about what they're talking about. So it would wake her up. If you're new to the gut microbiome and you watch it and you're a little sleepy, it may put you to sleep. <laughs> okay. I know. That stuff doesn't put me to sleep. It's no, I mean, it, it, it wakes health. you up. Yeah, it does. It's like, oh, like that's something new. You know, like I was like thinking about that in terms of like people that I'm working with too, you know, like learning about that specific bacteria that yeah. is a cause for, you know, people doing everything right and not being able to lose the weight. So I thought that was really yeah. interesting. Now they talked about bifidobacteria a lot, right? Mm -hmm. they did, did, I for, did I forward you the study or a tweet from Dr. Sabine talking about the bifida? I don't know, but I've I have her book. I've read. I, I follow. Okay, her this just Twitter. came out, so I will forward it to you. Basically, there was another study that came out that proved everything we were talking about two, three years ago mm -hmm. about how the um, vaccines damaged bifida bacteria, mm -hmm. etc. Came out, so she retweeted it, and she was like, "I've been saying this for years," and I was like, "Me, Lisa, and some of us have been." sharing this with people for some years now mm -hmm. and finally you can mention the truth about it and not be blocked on youtube or instagram the truth is now being able to be shared i know we're heading in the right direction as far as that's concerned yeah so thank goodness for that so you guys watch the documentary the name of it again lisa is hack your health Okay, hack your health. The secrets of your gut. Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. So you want to you want to get your gut to sometimes you got to get your gut healthy before you can get everything else healthy. 
Yeah. And if you get on it now, you'll know more than most uh, most doctors. Let me tell you that. Well, you know, it's even in there too. Like they're talking about like where, um, you know, like, I, I think a lot of people are concerned with parasites and, you know, all of this different stuff. But um, they were mentioning too, you know, we talk about how many, I love the challenge that, you know, like we have with um, how many different variety of fruits and vegetables are you eating in a week, right? And like they were even saying, you should have at least 20 to 30, uh, I think it was in that film, um, 20, 20 to 30, you know, different fruits and vegetables every week. I wonder how many, I mean, the majority of us are not getting that much. No. You know, no. most people are eating the same thing for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And that's where they thrive. That's why like the keto type of diets and the carnivore and all these things, they're so simple. It makes it easy for people. Mm -hmm. Right. Because the average person, I mean, I remember doing work in Missouri in 2014 with under resourced, underserved communities. And I remember having a cantaloupe in my hand and holding the cantaloupe up and asking these young kids in this, you know, kind of poor neighborhood, what was this fruit? Mm -hmm. And no one knew. They had never seen cantaloupe. Yeah. And I've heard stories where kids see an apple for the first time at maybe eight or nine years old. Yeah. So this is happening. People, I mean, we all get it and we can get comfortable in our little circles and assume that people are choosing not to eat fruits and vegetables. But many people have never seen some of these fruits and vegetables. I know. <clears throat> you know, which and then is you get crazy. like all of the had it, you know, like and and then there's the other part of it, right? So like when we like we you mentioned apples. So it's like there's quercetin in apples. And so you're not just getting that quercetin, like a lot of people I know are talking about quercetin and, you know, taking that as a supplement, but you're also getting the added benefits from eating the actual whole off. You're getting the quercetin and added benefits to that. Right. And all the, the pectin and yeah. the apple and all those benefits. Yeah. This is where I, I mean, you know, my thoughts on this, like I'm okay with supplements, mm -hmm. but I, I, I'm bothered by the industry where all these companies are just pushing supplements instead of pushing food. Yeah. And they wonder why I, I unfriend some of these people. You know, and it's like, you know, I was just having like a conversation with someone about um, like one, it's like, I always say like, well, why are you taking that supplement? <laughs> right like just, <laughs> like what's the part like what you, did you because a lot of times though people just hear oh you need to take this this and that okay well why why what is what is the purpose of you taking it and then you know like people will look on let's say amazon but i say never buy any supplements from amazon um unless you really really have to um but people will then look at like well like 38,000 people say this is a great supplement. And then I always think of like, I don't know, maybe it's just because I just don't, you know, kind of trust my own research and, and looking into different companies, especially supplement companies, because, um, you know, like they're not overseen by anything. Like you don't know really what you're getting with a lot of supplements. Mm -hmm. And so... Then you have, like, you don't know, like, you go look at Amazon, you look at these reviews, but then I say to myself, well, which which influencer is out there promoting this supplement <laughs> right now? You know what I mean? Like, that's, mm -hmm. I, I kind of look at things like that. Um, I'll do research on it. I, I, you know, I love to do my research on stuff, but um, I always say first, like, well, why are you on it? Why, why? Why, are, what's that supplement doing for you? Like, what's the purpose? A and lot of times people, people don't know. No, they don't know. I would bet you that 99.5% of people, when they recommend a supplement, they're recommending it because they have a vested interest. Mm -hmm. Because maybe it's a network marketing company. 
it could be Amway. It could be, uh, I mean, there's a lot of them, right? Um, Airbon, yeah. uh, Herbalife. I mean, there's a whole bunch of companies out there. And most of those people selling these supplements do not really know um, if that is a real legit supplement. Right. And I watch people, Lisa, and this is the only part about the internet that I don't like is watching these people. Cause once I got with Moder, right. And I was on their science board, I had a lot of new friends and allowed to have new Facebook friends that are in network marketing. So, and I like these people because I met a lot of them in person. And so they continue to be my friends on Facebook. So I see some of their posts and I want to like their posts, but I can't like it because I can't get behind the lies that they're, they're pushing. Yeah. It's because they don't know. Like, I mean, that's how I met you. I met you through Modair, right? Mm -hmm. I met you. I, I, well, I didn't even meet you at that conference. Oh, I thought we <laughs> met at a club one night. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, I'm getting you mixed up with somebody. Yeah, somebody else. Um, yeah, I thought we were at Disco 20. <laughs> no, but you had your fancy jacket on like you were going out That's to right. a club. Um, but I think that I think that I love people in network marketing. Like, yes, I really I do too. I really do. Like, I mean, those are like my people in so many ways because the, <clears throat> you know, like they, they get into something like they go all in. It's, it's a team of people kind of cheering you on, right? You have so much support. I have met so many amazing people through network marketing. Um, and I think like a lot Oh, did I lose you? Is, right? Like somebody got him to take it. Oh, you froze up. I froze. Um, you froze. No, you froze. So, uh, you froze on my end. <laughs> okay. Who froze? Some write it in the comments. Did we both froze? Yeah, I think we um, both froze. <laughs> no, I'm with you. I agree. You the do it because like you want to help. You Like you just get into it and then there's mm -hmm. just that whole vibe behind it. Right. And it's just like, yeah, we're, we're helping people. We want to help people. It's just like, I finally found what I want to do and I want to help people. And you, you think you're doing a good thing, but you're in there like emotionally, you're not really, I, I, I don't know if that's the right word, but. Um, I think, I think you, it was the right. I mean, I'm with, I, I, tell, I agree. I agree. Uh, I agree with you a hundred percent and it couldn't have been said any better because in network marketing, like my time with Modair was really fun meeting like real people from all over the world yeah. and sitting down, laughing, talking about things. Um, that part was extremely fun. And I definitely like that. Uh, the only thing I, I hope is that people like Modair had a, they had a, they have a good collagen mm. and and that was kind of cool to be able to come together to promote something that can that we know has scientific backing. Yeah. Yeah, that and part that's was still really something cool. that I take. <laughs> I just found another way to take it. Yeah. Which um, I'm gonna share that very <laughs> soon. I'm gonna do a whole the I'm gonna do a breakdown on how instead of paying $150 a month, you can get the same exact thing in collagen for $25 a month. I think, you know, like, I mean, and that's the thing too, because then like, once you even learn that, it's like, how can you, like, cause I was strong. I mean, that collagen, that is like the best collagen. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, anybody that I've ever, you know, that's kind of what brought me to Modair. Um, but, and I still take it. Um, but it was hard coming up with that money every month, you know, especially nowadays where you need an extra $900 a month just to, you know, <laughs> just to live, you know. Um, but I met like so many, so many, you know, like um, amazing people in that um, and people who pushed me, right? Like, I don't think, I don't think I would be on here with you being able to talk in front of people if not for 
um, being involved in network marketing and, you know, having like Margie, um, um, just people who like had a belief and like faith in you, you know what I mean? Like, and oh, yeah. we're really, you know, like, um, like I remember like one time, like her asking me to, you know, lead one of her like mastermind calls, you know, or, or talk about this. I actually talked about you on like that, that first time I did that was, was about that conference and, and what stuck out to me the most. And, um, I mentioned you, like that was just, you were talking about body composition and it just like, man, that made sense. I never understood it like that before. Um, you know, so it's like, it's that support. It's like that camar com camaraderie, right? And, mm -hmm. um, you know, having a goal to like want to help people, but then, you know, like certain things, once you start becoming aware, um, like now it's hard for me to get behind. Um, like I really have to like, I, I don't know. It's hard for me to just recommend something to somebody, right? Like in the past, it was like, oh, yeah, take a spoonful of this and you'll lose weight, you know, but now I know better. Right. You know what I mean? And uh, when you know better, you do better or you try to. Yeah. But I think that supplements have, I would actually, I think I was just sharing with you. So I was, um, one of the things that I want to work on that I, that I'm starting to work on is, um, medications and supplementation. Did I talk to you about that? I mean, we've talked about, you know, many things. <laughs> um, so like there are certain medications like prescription medications that people are on that they don't understand that it also depletes certain vitamins and minerals in your body. So like they mm -hmm. have, let's say you're taking one drug and it depletes, you know, magnesium. So instead of, um, taking magnesium or your physician advising you to take magnesium or checking your magnesium levels, they give you another drug to, um, you know, to supplement those side effects, but nothing of what your body really needs. It's deficient in something because it, that right. medication mm -hmm. is leaching those minerals. So that's something that I'm working on right now. I'm putting okay. together a whole list of different, you know, medications and what vitamins and minerals and stuff that depletes in your body. Well, it's kind of like what we were talking about, I don't know, last week or the week before, but when I did a post <clears throat> and I was sharing or I asked a question, does anyone know what eventually happens if you're taking blood pressure medication for over 20 years? Mm. And no one who was taking blood pressure medication for over 20 years knew the answer. And their doctors never brought it up because everything is based on helping things not get worse based on your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. But where all that stemmed from was in 2011, I was in uh, Columbus, Ohio, and I was one of the keynote speakers with three other physicians. <clears throat> and one of the physicians gave a talk and he talked about his father, who was also a physician. And his father in his 40s came down with high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So he started taking blood pressure medication. <clears throat> and 35 years goes by. Now his dad has some kidney problems. So he's having kidney failure. So he ends up on dialysis. And I had the opportunity to speak with both of them when they were both alive. And both of them told me, that the reason why his kidneys failed was because he had been taking this blood pressure medication for over 30 years. They both said that. Mm -hmm. And his father ended up dying as a result of dialysis. And I had done a post when I did that post on Facebook, I had a few people push back on me and they said, Hey, you're putting out misinformation. And I said, I'm not yeah. putting out misinformation. I'm just asking a question. Do you know, what eventually can happen if you're taking these medications for 20 plus years and no one knew. And then these people were making their comments. I looked at one of them was a physician. So of course she's protecting herself and she had high blood pressure for over 20 years. 
Yeah. And then I shared a study that took place a couple years ago from the University of Virginia, where physicians and researchers said, not me, they said in their research that blood pressure drugs may be a leading cause for kidney damage. Yeah, a lot of <clears throat> a lot of it like that. I'm actually going through that right now with a family member um, with kidney issues, high blood pressure medication. Um, now, thankfully, um, you know, he's gone to like a functional um, doctor who's amazing. And she saw, you know, like she, she did, she put the connection with the medication or also like now got to check like his thyroid because that, um, your thyroid actually, um, what is it? it? It regulates your, um, your blood and your pressure and stuff like that. So, but he's, he hasn't been on it for like that long, like, you know, but, um, it's interesting you brought that up. Yeah. And, you know, like, it's like people say, well, I saw those comments in there and I'm like, oh, as soon as you post things like that, I like always just go straight to the comments because I'm like, oh, what are people going to say? Because a lot of people have a hard time hearing that. Well, I've been on it for 20, 30 years and I have no guinea. It's like the same thing with vaccines. We all got vaccines. Well, you know what? We all didn't get 75 vaccines by the time we're five years old. You know, we have to be able to take a look at you know, not just say, I mean, and, and here's the, th here's the kicker is that how do you know all of the health problems that you're experiencing, all these different systems aren't from the medications that you've been taking, the vaccines you got when you were 10 years old, you know what I mean? Like you don't know. And I think we're learning that, um, you know, we've been misinformed by some of these people. Yes. Uh, and by the way, I mama. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mama. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So before we go over to Telegram, um, Lisa, um, we've known each other for a while, right? Yep. And I love that you are as real one-on-one -on -one in our conversations as you are alive, like you are, you are like the real deal. Thanks. And people feel that when they hear you talk, that's why they like you. Cause hammer girl is not just <laughs> going to say yes. She's not just a yes person. I'm not. And I love that. about. So when I share things with you and I run things across you, I hope you realize that I respect and value your opinion. Cause I know you're not a yes person. Thank you. So, and if you never realize, I just hope you really, clearly get that because I Thank love you. having friends and people that I work with that are not yes people. Yeah. Well, we have to challenge each other sometimes, right? Like, I mean, and yeah, I, I don't mean, know everything. I don't know everything either. So it's like, I, you know, like I'll come to you, you know, like, well, what do you think about this? You know, like, I don't, you know? Yeah. I mean, that, then, that's also the reason why I don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> 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 Why is that? Because I'm what? Good. I really don't know. I'm just trying to be funny. Okay. <laughs> just um, trying to break it up a little bit. But um, oh, and I meant to say, like you were talking about your Ferg in the beginning, but people missed your Ferg song that you you gave to me behind this. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> the Ferg song. What's up, everybody? You want me to rap? Come on. Uh -huh. Like I, I love what Mama Rico says. That's why we call her hammer girl. She, she brings <laughs> down the hammer. And oh, and you know that, Lisa, you would never hurt my feelings if you ever said, Robert, I hear your excitement about something. I, I, I feel your passion about it. But you know what? I'm just not I'm not getting what you're seeing. Like, yeah. I would be totally cool with that because then you and I would have ongoing dialogue. Conversation. Yeah, it was like even like the conversation that you had the other day, you know, like I was listening to I was listening to it and I reached out and I agreed with I, I agreed with some of it, you know. Now, what conversation was um, that? That was the one on who somebody was challenging you. I forget who it was. Somebody was challenging you on. Is, is that my friend who said I was judgmental sometimes? Yes, that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
And you know what? I mean, I appreciate her. I've known this woman for over 20 years. And she is very, she's very humble. She don't even know how to explain how amazing she is based on the training she's had. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I got some of the training that she has. And I'm telling you, like, if you saw this, like, when you come to California and visit, um, the, the, the leaders of this university are no longer there. But they put on these, these events all the time. And if you remind me, because I believe you're going to come to California soon. And when you come, I just want to schedule it so that they have a workshop that you and I can go to. It'll be like two-hour workshop. Yeah. And it's one of the most amazing things around psychology or spiritual psychology that you would ever experience. Yeah. And I these like people, that. Oh, they got it down. And she worked for 10 years. Not only did she graduate from their university, but she worked with the founders for over 10 years. Wow. Like, like there and guiding people like Marion Williamson, mm-hmm. um, Tony Robbins, um, Iyala Von Zant. I mean, you're talking some, some very famous popular people that are known for their philosophies and spiritual like uh, recommendations a lot of their training came from this university. Yeah. Um, And she was right there. So I love what we, the conversation that we had, because I feel like she helped me that day. Yeah. And, and I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for the fact that she's not one of those yes people. Yeah. It was a great conversation. You know, it really was. It was a really great conversation. Well, we are going to do it again. Is we're going to do a three parter. Yeah. It's going to be about a spirit. We're going to talk about spiritual weight loss and better health. I love that. Yeah, I think that's great. And if I can get her to open up, because what she doesn't, I got to get this woman because she would be a great asset to us as a, as if she became part of the team. She has some really good training that she could bring in yeah. that would help all the coaches take their game to the next level. Yeah, I, I really I love that conversation. I and I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to your series. I but I told you that I I I messaged you that. Okay. And you took it you took it very well. <laughs> <laughs> I hey, I'm okay with you know I've been eating crow a lot lately and um and I'm okay with it. You know I really am because. You become but we have better. To. Like you become better too, and like I mean, yeah. that even had me thinking too, because, um, you know, like even like the conversations that we had, and I know like probably one of those conversations that she was, you know, talking about you being judgmental was probably one of the conversations that we were having together, you know, like talking about Ozempic and you know, like different things like that, and uh, or no, it wasn't Ozempic, it was fasting. It was the fasting one, right? Yeah, that she was talking fast. about. And was. I just think that sometimes, like, you know, like that conversation that you two had also made me look at myself sometimes where, you know, because you you forget, like, you just want to help. And then, like, because, the, like, and I know that there's been so much information, like, so many things that, um, like, especially when it comes to pharma like in the pharmaceutical industry. That's something that I have been researching since 2003, probably even a little bit before that. Um, But that's what started it. And so, you know, and that's why like even say with like the medications and the supplements and like what it's actually depleting and and just kind of sharing that information because you may have to supplement, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think that sometimes too, when it comes off sounding judgmental, but um, it's be- it's this it's just that passion that's there to want to help cut out the lies that people have been told. I think, and I think it's hard to hear. I think truth is hard to hear sometimes. It is, especially when you buy into, like, you believe someone. You know, what I mean, it's kind of like the parent who goes to school; they get that phone call. Mm-hmm. Your kid has done something. And the first thing we do, or at least as a parent, I'm thinking, nah, not my kid. <laughs> and so I go there and the principal or whoever's like, 
well, this is what your daughter did, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, wait a minute. I think you got the wrong kid. Like, I'm, I walk in on defense. Yeah. Because I believe my kid wouldn't do that. And I think whether it's taking a vaccine or a medication or believing certain things from authorities that we've given power to. Yeah. And we believe they're looking out for our best interests. At first, you're like walking in defensive. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then you. And they make you believe like you brought that up with like the school. I was just going to I'll just going to jump in quick on that. Like, but that, you know, the, my son's last year in public school. He was in third grade. He was going into fourth grade. And we had like different, you know, he had uh, behavior intervention plans, like all of this stuff. And one of the last things that happened in that school, you know, like you have to trust your kids, right? Like, so the situation that happened was like, they said that my son was um, poking another girl with a pencil, right? And my son got suspended. They, they, they put him in like in school suspension for poking this, you know, they said in our class, he was, you know, poking her with a pencil. And I was, of course, like, you know, like, what are you doing? Like, you can't be doing that, you know, like, and I'm thinking like the worst of it. So then that, that a few weeks later, we're sitting in his um, IEP meeting and the teacher that was there had to like cover for another teacher to sit in on that meeting and it happened to be the art teacher and so we were talking about my son and I was just like you know like maybe like there's some sort of sort of sensory thing where he's just like moving or whatever like and you know poking this girl you know like so I brought up the fact that he apparently poked this girl and the art teacher looks at me and he's like he didn't poke her and I'm like, what? He's like, they were they were fighting back and forth, like pulling the pencil away from each other. He's like, he never poked her. But my son got suspended, mm. in school suspension for that. And I wasn't believing him because the teacher said that he did that. You know what I mean? Like, and you're not right. there. It's like, and, I, and, and ever since then, it's just like, you know what? Listen to your kids. I, I don't I don't buy I don't buy nothing that people say now. I'm gonna trust yeah. my kid and um you know do my own research on stuff. Like get all the information before you right because okay, you don't know well, who's lying to you. You don't and why and that's why like even the article that I wrote and I sent you, what you'll see is um I'll be adding all the citations. So there's 26 citations at this moment that and for those of you who don't know what i mean by a citation that means studies or research that supports everything that i say about this this article as i share information about um the importance of making sure you have an adequate amount or a sufficient amount of omega-3 which we didn't talk about and we can talk right. about later mm -hmm. um but the citations makes it where it's real right it makes it harder for someone to combat what you're saying. And then of course you have your anecdotal or your personal stories and experience that you can share with people that you've actually experienced. Right. Um, and then from there, people got to be willing to like give it a shot. Mm -hmm. And that's where I love test-based nutrition because then you remove your opinion, my opinion, everyone else's opinion, and we can just look at the data. Absolutely. Yeah. And now, I just have to make a comment. Yep. I, I was, I didn't mean to like, it looked like I was laughing while you were speaking about that, but I happened oh, to glance right. over <laughs> and I read Leith and Leslie's comments. Did you see that comment? <laughs> it made so, me chuckle. So Leith and Leslie, they're an amazing couple. They just survived the potential of a major tornado in Oklahoma. But I'm looking at her question. And I know Leslie knows the answer to this. Is crow pro a protein or a condiment? So, I'm, I'm, so is she referring to crow that you see like on a telephone wire? No. Like you said, I'm eating crow. I have to eat a little crow. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was laughing. Okay. That's funny. Because my mind was like, are they eating crow? <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> Hey, I bet there's people who eat crow. Yeah. Same, same as there's people who eat 
squirrel. And there's people who eat possum. Mm. I mean, you ever eat possum? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I did try like the the I was in Pennsylvania one time and I tried um turtle soup. That was disgusting. There's people who eat turtles. I was in a we I was my friend's husband was playing, his band was playing, and they were trying turtle soup. So I'm like, okay, I'll try it. Uh, it was disgusting. Hey, you ever had uh, snails? I like, did. What do you call it? What do you call it? Yeah, escargot. I did. did. you I like it? A... Um, no, it wasn't like what I thought. It was mushy. Like I was expecting it to be more like a clam, you know? And it was mushy. No. I didn't like that. Yeah, mushy. I didn't like it either. Yeah, I didn't like it either. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I can't believe I ate that. I felt just horrible afterward. Like, oh. But when I was down in, I think it was Jamaica, maybe it was Jamaica or I forget where, like they made like conch, conch, conch fritters. Have you ever had that? No. What's that? Um, It's from like the conch shell, you know, like the big shell. Mm. They call, I think, I mean, at least they called it conch fritters. So I figured it was from like the conch shells and uh, that was really good. I think that was in Jamaica. You ever eat fingers, human? No, uh, who knows? Well, I mean, who knows? I, I could have. It could have been in some of that meat I was eating, you know. Thing. Or you know, dog. You ever eat dog? No, I mean yeah. maybe at the Chinese. I don't know. You know, <laughs> <laughs> this is what they say, right? You don't know what you got to. You don't know. Well, this is great. So there's this thing called life. I mean, and that's what we're talking about. So any of you guys who are there before we say goodbye. We're going to go to Telegram just for a moment, but do you have any questions about nutrition, fitness, mindset, the collaboration of those things that can help you get to where you most want to be? Um, Lisa and I are here to, to help you because we are talking about life. Uh, yeah. and, I, and I have a question for Lisa as everybody's thinking about any question they want to ask. But Lisa, if I was a client mm -hmm. and I was a guy and I would come to you and I'd say, Lisa, I really want to get healthy. Mm -hmm. I'm buying all the right foods, I believe, especially after talking to you. But my wife continues to bring in all the things that are tempting and are not helping me. Hmm. Can you give me any advice on how to get her on board or to get her to respect the boundaries that I feel like I've set when it comes to nutrition? Hmm. You know what? I've never been asked that. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I deal with that myself, you know, sometimes I deal with that myself sometimes, like when, especially like when I'm around, um, I think I, I personally, I think that it's about you, right? Like, because there's temptation. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to just be at home. It's at the workplace, you know, like, so like that temptation is about you, but, um, one of the things that like, um, sometimes I, I, I have clients that like have certain, um, uh, what do you call it? Cravings. Yeah. Um, but, in the beginning, I build it in, right? Like, so it's like, if you, like, like, so I, I will like say like, well, you know what? It would be better if you had this, but if you are really, you know, like you really got to have that, you just have to, you know, have that as part of your meal like this or as a snack. So you can still have it. That's where I start with that. Okay. I mean, you do sense? realize... <clears throat> that most women who are in a relationship with a guy one of their biggest one of their biggest challenges if their goal is to lose weight is the person they're living with is not making it easy yeah and sometimes they don't want to you know <clears> like my pastor at church was saying like his wife um she when he started like losing the weight like she did she actually didn't like him like when he was losing the weight <laughs> 
Yeah. She wanted him to have the weight on. So she did. She made it harder. That's why, like I say, too, it's got to be about like you've got to be committed to that because temptation is all around. But God always has a way out. <laughs> now, as a, as a single guy, I can I, I can share something with you. <clears throat> Let's say I meet some woman who is 20 or 30 pounds from her goal. Mm-hmm. Right. I know for a fact, okay, in my own personal study, right, <laughs> that if I date her for three to six months, she's going to lose 20 to 30 pounds. Right. I know that. Because now, she's around you. She's eating what you're eating. And is because I'm not going to be her. You know what I mean? Like, I always believe that when you're in a relationship, and I, and I hope you guys get the point that I'm making. And the point is not about me dating women or if you want to date me just to lose 20 pounds. I'm not saying that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that one of the people in the relationship <clears throat> is going to be stronger in what the lifestyle experience will be. Yeah. And whoever pulls the most, the other person is going to be more like. Yeah. <clears throat> And I know I'm not going to be more like where they're at when I meet them. Unless they're already in that lifestyle. Yeah. And so if they're, if they have 20 or 30 pounds, I don't have to ever mention losing weight. I don't have to talk about losing weight. I just got to just let time go by because when you're hanging out with someone and you're watching a Netflix movie, some people are doing Grubhub and ordering the worst thing in the world. Or they're eating the worst things that you could eat at night. And I'm not going to do that. So because I'm not going to do it, what I've learned is that most women, at least in my experience, are going to eat what's available. And they're going to actually lean lean toward what I would call closer to nature or healthier. So in a weird way, what I'm saying, Lisa, is that if men... drop their guard and just like just just allow or just go with what women want yeah not all the time but i would say most of the time if a guy just goes with what women prefer the men would actually lose weight and feel better also it's like with kids too right like my son doesn't really my son eats um i mean he knows too protein carb Fast carb, slow carb, fat, condiment, right? Like, but like, I don't even have to let it, like, it's not like a diet with him. Like, you know, he just, I mean, he just starts because that's what he knows. Like he knows kind of. But, but mama, you, you, you created that though. Right. Well, well, that's what I'm, that, but that's how yeah. I kind of took like what you're saying too. Like when you're in that relationship like that, you know, like they start to kind of see what you're doing and, you know, maybe they change that themselves but if you're cooking it like i mean if i'm cooking in my house like if you come over like you know like let's say last last tonight i had leftovers but like last night it was chicken asparagus and a little bit of pasta because right, had- so this so this so guys out there if you date lisa <laughs> you will get in better shape <laughs> <laughs> If you well, can find you know some- <laughs> but you know what's interesting too is that I I did I dated a guy who was all into keto. Oh, what was that like? So, well, it was oh, that's a whole show. It was completely <laughs> opposite, right? Because he was he was into keto and he had lost all of this weight on keto, and we would go out and I'm eating. I, I, I like my fast carbs, you know, like I do, I, I have them and there's nothing wrong with it. And he just avoided them, but he's like, no, I can't have them. And I'm, you know, like, but he was plateaued and I'm like, you know, dude, that's your carb thresholds, <laughs> right? you know, I'm like, you need to add more carbs. And it took him a long time. Like, it was like. Keto was like a religion to him. Like he had to stay eating like that. And I'm just like, you need to, I'm like, try adding some more carbs. I'm like, here, like, you know, have some of my pasta. 
And um, eventually he did. And then he started um, losing the weight. And so then, wow. he, he, then he started like, yeah, like, so he started adding, you know, he just started adding carbs back in. He wouldn't, you know, kind of like how we, how we, how we do that. And, um, you know, he took baby steps and adding carbs back in and he started losing weight again. And so he realized he didn't have to avoid all those carbs. So it was interesting. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, there you go. I'm telling you. So depending on who you date, you're either going to gain <laughs> or you're going to lose. We should do a whole show on that. You know how they say love is blind? <laughs> which is a series I like watching with my daughters, which I really actually like. I can't believe I like this series. I've never seen it. Oh, man. Like my daughters got me into it. It's love is blind on Netflix. And it has been a really fun show to watch with my kids. Uh, because it's not vulgar or anything crazy like that. It's not like the bachelorette where it's, all you see is kissing and tonguing and mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like it's, it's about, it's pretty cool. Cause in the beginning you go into the, what they call pods and you get to meet people, but you don't get to see them. Mm -hmm. So you get to go on dates that could be an hour, two hours, three hours long. And you're having conversations with someone and you don't even know what they look like. And you go on another date and another date. And after four or five, six days, you start cutting it down. And maybe it comes down to one, two, three different people that you find yourself liking as far as talking to. Mm -hmm. And then you got to pick somebody based on the conversations you've had. And so if you want to move on in the show, you propose. The guy proposes. And then the girl, the lady accepts. And then you get to meet each other for the first time physically. Mm -hmm. And then you go into the next part where they put you on a vacation. You get to stay in the same room. You don't have to sleep in the same bed, but you can. But you've fallen for each other emotionally, intellectually. Yeah. Now, do you match up physically? Mm -hmm. And then if you make it past that part, you go to the third phase where they have you live together based on life. Right, the theme of this this show, and you see people they fall in love intellectually. They meet. There's no physical attraction. Some people have a physical attraction. Mm -hmm. Then it moves on. Then you live together. Some people they get to that part. Now nah, I can't live with this person. But then <laughs> some of them make it, and then they actually get married. Mm -hmm. And now it's been six seasons. My favorite couple got married in the first season and they're still together. That's good. And they got a baby. <laughs> and I was like, in. you know what I mean? Like I fell into it. I was like, I love this couple. Uh, and I'm watching it with my kids and, and I'm just cheering for that couple and they are, and they're still together. <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> I don't know. You're you're invested. I don't know, Rob Burke. No, I'm it's just saying. Good. If you give it a shot, it's a very interesting show. Oh, okay. I'll check it out. And maybe that's the world we live in, right? Get to know someone because oftentimes we meet someone and there's a physical attraction, mm -hmm. and but then no mental... right, then you find out if you have that, mm -hmm. right? I mean, in my life, I've dated some women physically. I would go. Woo! And then they start talking. I go, don't talk. Don't say one more word. Just, just, just stare. <laughs> because if you talk, it's over. This is not going anywhere. I mean, I'm just kidding you guys. Don't say that wrong. <laughs> and I'm sure, look, think about it. You get a guy that, I mean, I think Brad Pitt was a good looking guy. Like, I mean, I still think he's a good looking guy. Mm -hmm. But you have a guy like Brad Pitt, but then he starts talking and it's nothing but ignorance. Yeah, it's not attractive. I've, I've heard women go, dude, don't talk. <laughs> don't talk. Stop. Take your shirt Stop. off and just sit just right Just look there. there and look pretty. That's right. <laughs> don't talk. <laughs> just sit there and, and just look around. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Anyway, we went, we right. went, o we went over our hour. This there. was fun. This it was, was and it was good to see you on camera. 
I know. Well, see, now it's starting to get dark again. I said, like, that might be a good time for us. Like, I can, because otherwise, remember last time my camera was going in and out? Yeah, but it's the lighting was good. Here. The lighting was great. Yeah, but now the sun is, you know, starting to get dark here. So maybe like 6 30, 7 o'clock is our time to do that. All right. Well, all we right. Have, can we go to the Telegram for 20 minutes? Yeah, let's go. All right. So tell everybody where Telegram is. All right. So you're going to see the you're going to see the uh the link in the comments. Where is it? Down below, right? Yeah. Um, so you just click on that link. If you don't have Telegram, you know, like you'll be able to sign up for Telegram. And then once you once you're in there and you see that link, um, you'll be on the Dia Free Life Telegram channel. And then if you look up at the top right hand corner of your screen, you'll see a join button and you can come in there and chat with us. Now, can on Telegram, can I can I let loose and go off on the whole Mega 3 thing? Oh yeah, you can you can go off and say whatever you want on Telegram. There's no um, yeah, what do they call I, them? Uh, there's no um. Well, I'm just pissed off. Like every day, I wake up. You don't get marks off. on you. You don't get you know you don't get taken down on Telegram. You can say whatever you want. Okay, because I'm serious. Every day, I wake up pissed off. Yeah. Like the last six weeks, I'm like frustrated when it comes right. to the importance of omega three. Yeah. So let's and go talk about it. All right. Anyway, I was about to ramble. So you're, thank you. All right, you guys. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with the, the man, the one and only Prince, as he talks about or wrote a whole song about this thing called life. And then just click on the button. Uh, we'll see you over in Telegram. Thank you, Lisa, for being real as always. Thank you. You are appreciated. I, I wish you lived in California, but if you, can, <laughs> if you and your son came to California, you'll be like, I got to get the hell out of here. So, I, I don't know which is worse, New York or California. I don't know. I think our common ground is going to be uh, Florida. We got to get to Florida. I know. We got to get to Florida. We got to get to a, a free no. state. We're going to make that happen this year. That is the plan. And Sounds we're going like to invite everyone else. Everybody can come with us and we'll all meet in Florida. Yeah, that would be fun. Okay. Could I have the place for us to all meet? So, All right. Let's happen. go. All right. All, all right, right, you guys. Bye. What's up, Jerry Van? Jerry Van in the house. We're going to Telegram, you guys. Here's the man, the one and only. They call him Prince. Peace. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. No, let's go. You don't lie. You're worthy in. Take a look around.